that moment specifically to answer your question was extremely personal for me. You know what I mean? Like here I am writing on my first Oscars. I'm friends with Will and Jada. I'm friends with Chris. This conflict that takes place on live TV and they're saying, after it happened, well, who wrote the joke? You mentioned earlier about your stature and people testing you physically because they, they didn't feel you were intimidating. Then you have another part of it with you being a writer, and um, not just any writer, but a writer for award shows and, and whatnot. Where do you land and do you have any connection to what we um, saw when it came to Chris Rock being slapped by Will Smith? Is there any backstory that you can be able to share, like what went down um, from your perspective? Back when I first started doing stand up, there's no way that you could have told me, oh, one day you're going to write on the Oscars. You know, I, I guest starred on Fresh Prince, uh, Will and Jada and I, we've been friends forever. You know what I mean? Like. That's the thing that I think people forget about this business is, you know, as you're coming up, you're coming up with everybody else that's coming up. You know what I mean? Like you all hang out together, you're friends. Like, so that moment specifically to answer your question was extremely personal for me. You know what I mean? Like here I am writing on my first Oscars. I'm friends with Will and Jada. I'm friends with Chris. Chris has been, you know, a sounding board and somebody that I've looked up to for my entire career and will as well. And so the fact that there's this conflict that takes place on live TV and you're one of the writers and they're saying after it happened, well, who wrote the joke? You know what I mean? Like they're coming at the writing staff like somehow we had something to do with this. So it was, it was like, it was such a, 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 a personal and public moment. You know what I mean? Where everything sort of intersected in this way where it was like, wow, like this is not what I expected was gonna happen Oscar night. You know what I mean? First time riding the Oscars? Yes. You know, the, 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 the executive producers, Will Packer, you know, you, you've got, you know, uh, black people behind the scenes, basically in charge of the Super Bowl of Hollywood. You know what I mean? And that's rarefied air. Like you don't get those opportunities. You don't you don't just fall off the truck and someone says, hey, you want to do the Oscars? Like it takes years and years of credits and all of that. So a real, real interesting perspective that you're able to have that seat. Yes. Because yes. many of us at home are watching this. Chris Rock makes the G.I. Jane joke. Right. Instantly, I'm assuming you guys knew Will Smith was not supposed to be walking on stage. Yes. Yes. But I will say this. Um, we did a bit earlier that night where one of the hosts was interacting with the two other male presenters, right? And a couple of people that were in the audience walked up on stage. So I think because that happened earlier in the night, it opened it up for the people in those front rows that happened to be stars that they could walk on stage. Yes. Now, where are you when, are you watching this like? Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, I had, you know, a lot of people don't realize they, like a lot of people think that the Oscars are just, you put a tuxedo on and the stars just wing it. That's not what happens. You know what I mean? Like most of that stuff is very scripted aside from the impromptu moments of the acceptance speech and all that. So there's a lot of writing. There's a lot of pressure that comes with that. Like. It's the Oscars. Like there is a tremendous amount of pressure. And like I said, we wanted to over deliver. You know what I mean? Like black people don't get that real estate that often. Yeah. So we were trying to really, really do the damn thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, go ahead. So 
Uh, with that being said, you know, this is the last half hour of the show. The way the Oscars are, like it accelerates. It's, the, you know, the last half hour, you're getting to the bigger awards, the bigger awards, right? I was backstage in the green room. Um, uh, Diddy was doing a, uh, we were doing a tribute to the Godfather movies. And Diddy was the presenter presenting to Francis Ford Coppola, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, like, you know, all the Godfather people. And this moment between Chris and Will happened right before that. So that was my last thing that I was technically responsible for. But when this happened, it changed everything. And it's also live TV. So you don't know in that moment, I didn't know how that was going to play itself out. Like it literally was above my pay grade. You know what I mean? So at that point, it's not about the jokes. It's not about, you know, what, 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 what's gonna, like it, it was above my pay grade. Like that was something way different, but. How did it, uh, oh, well, go ahead. I'll but it was the defining moment that the night became about. Yeah. How did you feel when they decided to continue the show? Um, like I said, you know, it, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't my call. It wasn't my decision. You know what I mean? Like at that point, you know, you're, it's live TV. It's live network TV. Like I was, I didn't know what, like, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know what was going to happen in that moment. I know that I brought my daughter to the Oscars, which was, you know, amazing for me to be able to give that to my daughter because I know how long it took me to get there and to bring her and have her experience that and that teachable lesson of this is for you, this is yours as well. That's what I was focused on. So after the slap happened, I went to go check on my daughter. You know what I mean? Like I got, that slap sent me into dad mode. Gotcha. You know well, what I mean? Why is that? Because of just, you thought because I didn't know what was going to happen after that. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what was going to happen after that. And, you know, I don't want to sound like overly dramatic or anything. But in that moment, I don't think anybody knew what was going to happen. Because at first people were like, is that real? Was that you know what I mean? Like, that's what that's what the outside world was asking. But for somebody knew. that had been hired early on to write on the Oscars, I knew it was real. You know what I mean? And so I was like, well, let me make sure my daughter's cool because, you know, like I said, these are close family friends. And this is something that is playing out on live TV that is affecting us in a personal way. Yeah. Now, I have three questions centered around this. One is you mentioned that Ideally, of course, being in the writer's seat, you knew that the slap that Will Smith gave Chris Rock was not a part of the script. Yes. Now, there was somebody, um, Cat Williams has commented on this, and he alluded to that this is a Hollywood game. This is, you know, they know how to manipulate things. Right. Um, any response to just that statement that's been floating? Well, if, if they do... They kept me out of the loop. <laughs> they didn't tell me and I was a writer on the show. <laughs> Fair enough. So, you know, and that's and that was like another thing, uh, another side about it. Just, you know, I mean, if we're really going to talk about this, let's talk about it. Um, yeah. It was very interesting to be a part of something that this moment happened and then Everyone in the world had a perspective about it and you had to hear everyone's perspective. And as somebody that was extremely close to it, I was silent on the issue. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I remember the day after the Oscars where it's all the newspapers and it's like it's everywhere. Right. I got a call from someone at The Washington Post. And they go, yeah, I, uh, I, I heard you were a writer on the show. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say? And I was like, absolutely not. And he goes, uh, hey, just between you and me, this is just between you and me. And I was like, oh, really? Really? 
Like, this ain't my first what birthday. Was he, I mean, so what was your reservation with about speaking about it right away? Well, you just... because no good could come from it. Like, e the, no matter what I said, they're going to frame it however they want. And I learned that the hard way. Because I was on stage years prior to that uh, at the Laugh Factory when Michael Richards Kramer had his meltdown. So I was one of the comics that went on early that night. And after that happened, um, the owner of the club asked me to do an interview. Right. And at that time, I was like, yeah, I'll help the club out. I was there. I have a point of view. I saw it. I'm going to talk from an honest place as a black man and as a stand up who didn't like that and did and, and I saw it. Right. So I had an authentic point of view. I shared my point of view in a TV setting and it was all twisted up. And so I learned back then that sometimes you got to just let things play itself out. 